ignore that. We're um, trying out the Friday the 13th game because I've played it a lot as you can see at the bottom. Um, I'm level 5, but it's like I found out this offline mode is actually a virtual cabin offline bots. Whoa. Okay, so this is what. Shit! Sorry, freaking background noises. Freaking shit! Um, so freaking, I have friends, like, apparently posting, like, the link to the, vi like, stream. They're just like, alright, as soon as it gonna, it's gonna go up, I'm going to uh, post it. And so, I'm just waiting for the okay. Oh, okay, I got it. I just got the okay. That's actually pretty quick. Holy crap. Uh, that was actually really quick. So... Uh, I was told I should do the virtual cabin first. Um, I don't know what to expect. The virtual cabin, it seems like, um, I don't know. But, I don't know what to expect, so, uh, I don't know. Freaking, <laughs> my dog keeps barking. She literally, like, barks pet like, at anyone. Oh. Oh. Oh, loading beta. Virtual cabin release dot exe. Okay. Any time now. Oh. Oh. Would you look at that? Oh, so it's like a um thing. Ugh. Horribus. And oh, it's about the, like each movie. In part three, Andy played by Tracy Savage and Jeffrey Rogers can noodle in a hammock. After returning from a shower, Debbie lounges on a fan jewelry magazine. She flips to an article about Tom Savini, the man behind many cla of the classic Friday special effects. Unlikely for her, Jason was hiding with a knife beneath the hammock. Oh. Double vision. Okay, well, this is pretty cool. Um, hey, who are you? And how did I find you? I don't know. You found me. Um, you shouldn't be asking me about this. What's this? Counselor, change date. Oh. Do I, uh, uh, fry day, Friday 13, I don't freaking know, yeah, I, I guess so, counselor database, wow, Image missing. So it's... I don't know if I want to change the date. Oh, this is really cool. Diorama display. Alley. Oh, this, this is Jason. Look at it, it's so cute. Ah, Jessica. <laughs> it's so cute. So I'm told that Jason's at. You can actually find Jason here. The music of the films. It was all played on piano. That's pretty amazing. Writing. The script. Ah. Chapter 1. Death penalty. Stay away from heck. Hell. The J-Cons. Killed killers. The end. 
Oh, it's more than a movie in a franchise. It's also a television series. It we in Russia, Mother Russia. Oh, blue cap. Can I put this on, please? Aw, how do I get out of here? Oh, wait, what? I can't get out? Are you serious? What is this? Okay, so did you want to do an intro? Uh, hello. Welcome to the virtual cabin. Oh. I'm Chuck Brengard, CEO of Ilphonic, and we are the developers behind Friday the 13th, the game. Oh. Which you are currently playing now. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say to the fans? Sure. I just want to say thanks for playing and supporting the game. Our fan base has been incredible. This project has exceeded even our wildest dreams. And that's because of all your continued and amazing support. Aww. So where are we? So this is the Virtual Cabin. 2.0 to be exact. Oh. The Virtual Cabin was a way for our backers to check out new art assets and discover a few hidden Easter eggs as we were building the game. It was a really engaging way to show a sneak peek at what we were developing. So, a sneak why peek. Bring it back? A ton of work went into researching the Friday the 13th films for the game. And we wanted to present a fun way to go behind the scenes and learn more about how the movies and the game were made. Oh. Consider this as an expanded virtual museum. Ah. You can explore the lore of Friday the 13th and take it all in. Who yeah. knows? There might even be a few new Easter eggs to discover. If yeah. you go digging deep enough. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound so ominous. Digging deep enough? Does that mean we have to, like... Oh, wait, I, I know one part of... Like, I know, like, parts of the movie. There's, like, one scene where, like... D Jason was dead, and he had to go dig. They they dig his dead body up, and like, like they dig his dead body up, and then like, like use some kind of lightning rod or something. I think it was called. Um, oh, there he is on the newspaper. Jason Voorhees slain. Yeah, that's what I. That's what it is. Look, um, he was killed. Part four to be the final Friday the Thirteenth film. Not only the title, the final chapter. The script called for Jason's head to be split open in the final kill. Even Harry Manfred's, yeah, but like the, there was another one after that where they brought Jason back to life. Uh, can I like get outside? Where's Jason? Wait, am I Jason? Is like everybody frozen? <gasps> it's the masks. Ah, oh, the mask. Corey F Feldman was slated. Slated to reprise his role of Tommy Jarvis in this film. Unfortunately, being cast in two Spiel movies led to scheduling conflicts. A compromise was reached in which the child actor would appear, but only in the opening sequence. Director Danny Steenman arranged for the crew to set up in Fieldman's backyard. They put up extra bushes and had a rain machine and wrapped the shoot in two hours. Ah, uh, this is like, I think... Don't I think this is the one that I'm really like, like, common with? I think I don't know. A lot of these masks have like cracks on the top right. That's pretty weird. I think it was this one. It's either that one or this one. Oh, wait, this is the, this is like the second one I'm here. I'm common with. Wait, so there's three masks missing. Oh, the bird cage, crumb or what? Um, okay. Coming soon. Use other doors. I'm gonna take my headphones off because this music's kind of creeping me out. Oh. Well, this is great. Jump scare. The iconic stinger in part one where a boy Jason springs out from the lake helped spawn a franchise. According to the special effects Tom legend Tommy Savini, the orig origin of the story started as a conversation he had with the director's Sean Cunningham. Savini had just seen Carrie and had been impressed with the stinger at the end. He suggested that once the killer had died and the audience were, were, was relaxed, boy Jason should jump out of the lake and attack Alice. Cunningham agreed and the legend and a legend was born. Ah yeah. Bed. Like other movies in the series, Part 2 had to be difficult time receiving at, at, at an R rating from Motion Picture Association of America. An X rating only avoided once 48 seconds had been trimmed. One scene that raised the ire of censors was the 
Jeff and Sandra impaled by a spear while having sex in the bed. Oh, yeah. That wasn't a pretty scene. Oh, it's the many murder weapons of Jason. Pickaxe. Um, part two. Oh, wait. No, wait. The spear I can understand. This is the spear he... Um... Machete. Oh, in part... Uh, nine. Jason goes to he hell. In Jason's right eye, that shows the machete damage as opposed to the left eye that is damaged at the end of part four. Um, I... And Gun Media corrected this in part 9, Jason, in the game. The devs took a poll to see if the mistake should be re retconned or let be. The verdict was that was that it should be fixed. Many, Gun, including Ronnie Hobbs, were still conflicted. There were some people that wanted it to be fixed, but if we didn't, we couldn't live with ourselves. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Axe. That's a bat. That's a double-ended axe. It's pretty cool. Duck. Jason's relationship with animals is undefined. In part two, J Jeff and Sandra discover a dead dog. It is suspected that it is the work of a killer of the killer, although it's never confirmed. In part eight, in part eight, Jason takes Manhattan. The director instructed Kane Hooter, who played Jason, to kick a dog. Hooter, Hotter, who however, refused, saying it wasn't in Jason's character. Yeah, Jason doesn't kick, he cuts. That's the thing. Besides Bill's impalement in the original Friday the 13th Friday, there have been several characters that Jason has affixed to walls or doors or even rafters. The bike gang character of Fox, ooh, I like... I like them. Played by Gloria Charles, was impaled in the neck with a pitchfork. Yeah, that wasn't good. And the left to hang from the second story of a barn. The pitchfork was real, but it made but made so that the two prongs in the middle were collapsible. Wow. Archery target. What's this? Oh, it's the original sl volume. Slasher Volume 1. Even before they had the license to, at developers at Gun Media intended to write a love letter to Friday to the, to the Friday series and knew they needed legends to do it. Speaking of their early days, co-creator Ronnie Hobbs didn't mice, mince words. Our goal all along for Slash Volume 1 was to get Tommy Savini, Kane Hodder, and... Jason is dead. Two for one burger sale. I could go for a burger sale. Tommy Giovanni's desk. Or. Where did they. Jar Jarvis's. Sorry. Radio to call Tommy Jarvis. Ah. A knife. Throughout it, Tommy's. Tom of 70. As some idiot people, yeah. Baseball bat did the most capture for Jason's kill. He is known for its his intensity and dedication to his craft. For some of the weapon kills, uh, dummy for harder to physically hit with rubber bats. According to that, dummy didn't last a week. Every morning, the prop people would be duct taping it back together because Kane would just beat the crap out of it. Flare. Among the interesting deaths, uh, are stranded in the long, along the woods. You know, for guns. Uh, Jason ambushes the two, shoves a road flare in Vindy's mouth. Ah, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't know that. I didn't know he. Ah, uh, pig splitter. Um, the game who had its own problems with censors. Germany's ratings aboard the USK. Um, found the game so violent that they rejected the game at launch. Wow. Ah, uh, the gun. Is there, like, can I even, like, pick up anything? Welcome to C Crystal Lake. Yeah, that's not a... Come and see. 
Um, this is a bed. Wait, is this an Alexa or something? I don't trust that closet. I think there's something in it. Freaking just Jason pops out like. Mwah. Okay. Game development. I don't know what that has to do with it. Or whatever. So there are three masks missing. There's like one Jason that I knew like like by himself, but I just can't put my finger on which one it was cuz there's so many of them. Okay. So I don't know if anybody's in the stream still. Um, okay, so let's see here. Can I run? No, I can't. Okay, I can't do anything. So, I guess it's just like what they said. It's like, just a gallery. But, why can't I interact with the door? I want to go outside. Oh. Ah, it's that scene. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Was Jason underneath it? Ah, uh, I like how I'm just peeping in. Oh, hello. The girl next door is voiced by Christine, Christina Kleb, Klebe or whatever. Yeah, she's not that bad. I don't have any hands. Wait, can I enter? Oh. Red bandana. Oh, look at that sexy man. There's a lot of crap in here. Wait. I wonder how I can get out of the house. Developing story. Ah, uh, the mythos. Who are you? Deborah Kim, oh yeah. Apple. The big apple. Uh, t Jason takes Manhattan covered in goo, according to Kane Hodder. Wait. They put slime on him in every single shot. He was wet the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that honestly, like, I know what they're talking about. But it's like, that didn't make any sense, like, I mean, he should have at least dried, even if it was, like, nighttime. You see, he, they should have, like, put less on him at times. They should have, like, put it on him and then let it dry. But, you know, it was there, it's not mine. What was the creepiest part about working on the game? Oh. Oh, for sure, the phone calls. Okay, sorry, um, that was great. Can you start over, but this time incorporate the question into your answer? Uh, my bad, yeah. So the creepiest part about working on this game was... I get these weird phone calls to my personal phone. We worked on the game for almost, uh, I think it was about three years. And every single Friday the 13th, we would get these calls from someone. Hmm. At first, I thought it was someone at the studio, Paul or Dan or something, but it had to be like an F-13 fanboy or something. They would use this voice distortion and claim to be Pamela warning us to honor the memory of her son. Sometimes they would just laugh in the phone and hang up, but, but most of the times they would just, you know, complain about the game taking so long. That doesn't sound that creepy. It wasn't until one time I called the number back and heard this. Wow. So someone inspired them with their own crap. There's keys right here. Can I take them? Dang it. Can't take anything. Shoes. Crap, how do I get... I want to get out of here. Wait, maybe I have to, uh... 
Check for updates. Okay, let me see. Okay, here we go. Alright, so I gotta watch this. What? Oh, that now that's creepy. This is the password. No, that's not that. Back. No. Back. This is the password. Now that's creepy. Wow. Downstairs display room. Oh, got a new room. The red door, five hundred thousand dollars. A little budget for expensive lighting, lightning rigs, resulting in night fire. Best <laughs> police car, sheriff's badge, wheelchair. Oh, here it is. Wait, did I just take it? Whoa, I took it. Wait, what? Oh. Um. I don't know what to do. I don't go away. Uh, freaking, what do I do? So I can take stuff. Okay, well, I'm going to completely wussy out, so let's do this thing. Heck yeah. Let's go all the way across the room. Distant yelling. Okay, let's go. We did it. Hooray. I actually almost crapped myself from that. go perfect all right well this is a cute little walkthrough i'm gonna go test around with this thank you guys so much for watching